but let's go over the Carvana trade. Let's talk about this trade specifically. Why, why did we go after this stock short? You might say initially, oh, wait, they had good earnings. Wait, the stock is gapping up huge. Like, why would you short a stock that's gapping up on good news, right? A lot of people might say that. You might say, wait a second, the stock has good news. It's gapping up. Why would you short a stock that has good news and is gapping up? Carvana historically never holds its moves to the upside because it's not a great company. It's a terrible stock. Um, it's very heavily shorted. So when you, when you do get these move high, these these upside moves, you get these like quick little volatile short squeezes where the stock pops higher. But it really has a very difficult time breaking through serious resistance levels. And there was a big level of resistance here. There was a big level of resistance here for um, Carvana right here around like 1075 or so. And I'll take you guys to the daily chart and I'll show it to you. Right. So here's that, here's that line. I'm not, I haven't touched that line. Here's that line. Okay. So you guys can see this line. You see this previously was a level of support back there in February. When we broke beneath that level in February, it then became resistance. And then you'll notice it became resistance once you got into March and it was once again, resistance in March. And then we got up here in early April and tested it again and it became resistance. So you start to see this huge level of resistance forming here right underneath $11. Right, right underneath eleven dollars, you got this massive level of resistance. So the stock gapped up today, and I told members, I said, guys, listen, I I do not like Carvana. Right, it's 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 not a good company. It's not a good stock. It doesn't doesn't hold its, it doesn't it has a tough time holding its moves. And on this gap up, I said in front of this resistance level, if this thing can't get through that level, I'm going to step in and I'm going to short it. And that was exactly the game plan from the day. And there's the line. I haven't touched that line. Right. So here's that line. So right off the open, we pushed right into it. And I'll pan this, I'll pan over so you guys can see this more clearly. Right off the open, we flew right through the level and then just got pulverized. Now, I don't know how many of you were actually looking at level two, you know, at this moment, but as soon as Carvana got up over eleven dollars, it got to like eleven, like eleven ten, eleven fifteen. And all of a sudden it went from like 1115 bid to like 1078 bid. The selling pressure that came into this stock as soon as it got to 11 was insane. This is a very thick stock. Carvana does not have like these big gaps. It's a very thick stock. There's a lot of shares at every single penny that this stock trades at. And the selling pressure was so aggressive that it went from 1115 to 1078, 1080 bid in a split second. Somebody sold into and took out all the 11, 15s, 14s, 13s, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 99, 98, 97, took them all out, all the way down to like 80 cents. And I was like, there's the selling pressure that I was expecting. There's the level of resistance. And it gives you this big, strong rejection candle. So I stepped in and I got short at $10.70. Okay, right here. So $10.70. We then take the trade. We take the entry short. I alerted to members in case you guys, you know, I always give options. If you guys don't want to follow the equity, I traded the equity. I shorted the equity at 1070. But I told members if you want to follow the trade, I'd go after May 12th. So next Friday's expiration, $10 strike put. And at the time, the put was around a dollar, a dollar five. And we got into that trade for the short. And then about six minutes later, the stock actually halts to the downside right in front of the low of the day and then opens up out of the halt and we take our very first piece of profit off the table. 25% of the position comes off the table right there. And then we dropped even further and we take more, more profit off the table and the stock just continues to bleed itself out. And I took another piece of profit off the table. Now at this point, I'm down to a small piece of my position and we decided to go after this stock again because this is a beautiful reload opportunity and there's a there's really a lesson here that I want to talk to you guys about about believing that if a stock is truly a good trade, you're going to get more than one chance at it. So if you really believe a stock is a good long, you usually you'll get more than one opportunity to buy the stock. So if you miss your first opportunity, don't kick and scream, don't get angry and upset, stay focused and look for another entry opportunity. If you think a stock is a really good short and you miss your first entry, don't kick and scream. Wait for another opportunity to get into that trade for the short and just adjust your game plan. So I got in at 1070. We took profits and profits and profit. I'm down to a small piece of the position. Then we bounced back into a gorgeous area to reshort the trade. And right here, I added back to the position at $9.90. So 
So $9.90, we reloaded the position. Now, why is this a good spot to reload on the trade? Well, there's a ton of resistance levels that are lining up at this area. What are they? Let me walk you through them. One of the things you'll learn as a member of True Trading Group is how to use multiple technical indicators in conjunction with one another. The more indicators that converge on a specific price, the greater the chance that level is going to hold. That's why you want to learn how to use multiple indicators to give you buy signals and sell signals. So for this re-entry, you have the initial morning low, which is always an important level for you guys to focus on intraday. Initial morning low, you have the halt price. Halt prices are also always important levels. Okay, so you have a halt price, the initial morning low. Here's my VWAP indicator, this orange line. That's my VWAP indicator. And then when I draw out my Fibonacci retracement levels, you'll see my Fibonacci retracement level, the 50 Fibonacci level lines up with the halt price and the 38.2 Fibonacci level lines up with the initial morning low. That creates about a 15 cent window to re-enter this trade short or to get short for the very first time if you missed the first entry. So I told members long before this stock got back to $10, I told everybody on the microphone, and this is the analysis you get inside a chat. 